Hey folks, welcome back. So today I'm doing another small motorbike expedition. Um, I'm in the small town of Trubschachen in the canton of Bern. It's close to the border of canton of Lucerne. And I recently came across a news article um, talking about uh, a coal deposit in the hills up here to the south of Trubschachen. And apparently that coal deposit is laced with uranium ore. So we should be able to find us some radioactive coal. Um, yeah, beautiful area here. Join me for a small trip. Uh, let's see if I can find something. <laughs> So I arrived at the spot where the hiking path starts. I need to get up into this forest. I saw on the geological map that apparently up there is an old quarry or a place where they actually dug up some of the coal. Hope I can find it. And as my tools, I got my atom fast detector, the scintillator here, which I will use with my old phone, mostly for mapping and logging. And I also got my new radio code 102 which I will use as my primary detector, but just standalone. And also maybe we can do some gamma spectroscopy with this thing when we find something. Well, let's see about that. <laughs> so, I just came up here. I think I'm pretty close to the spot where I want to get to. Just wanted to show you the view again. Also, the, these hills over there, the small mountain range you see, that's the Knopf mountain area, which is also really interesting, also like geologically. You can actually still find gold up there. I went for gold panning once or twice. Wasn't really successful, but I found like a tiny bit. So yeah, this whole area is pretty interesting, geologically speaking. Like this is the Knopf mountain area. And if we would cross these hills here, which maybe we'll do later, on the other side of this is the Emmental area, which you may be familiar with from Emmentaler cheese. But yeah, let's take a look later. Apparently I have to get down into this forest here somehow. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> well, apparently I have to get down here. And I think I have to walk back a bit. I think I need to access it from down here and then I can walk into the forest. But I already walked this hill, so I'll just walk back. Let's see. Okay, I think I'm getting closer. So I came from back here and look what I found. I think this is an old quarry, like an open pit quarry. Like during World War II, they actually dug out about 50 tons of the coal here. And also like before, in the 1800s, 1850s, the locals apparently used the coal for blacksmithing. And this was also researched in the 50s and 60s, like 1950s and 60s, by like uh, the Swiss government's nuclear agency. Uh, actually, at one point they thought this is the biggest uranium deposit of all of Switzerland, which honestly I doubt, but... Oh, there's a wasp here, go away. Okay. Yeah, but this here looks really man-made. This area looks like an old pit. So maybe I found a small hot spot. I found these rocks here pretty uh, low down still. This here looks a little bit like cold to me. It's all really wet. There's also like a small stream coming out from here. Now I'm measuring 0 0.0607 uh, microsieverts per hour with the radio code. And this stuff here looks really like cold to me. Like if I take something out, it's very wet though. But it's very soft, you can push it. Again, I'm not a geologist, I don't really know what I'm doing here. But this kind of looks like something promising. I think we're really onto something here. It's 0 0.09 meanwhile. So it is a little bit more than double the background. Yeah, maybe take this one here. I don't know. Try to break out a little bit from here. Oh, oh fell into the back. Perfect. Yeah, I have to dry this at home. It's really wet. Cool. Let's head on to the next spot. I'm kind of close to the other side of the creek, of the small stream. Over here there's a lot of rock too. This looks very promising. Up here there's rock, so this is really like a, 
a creek, the water worked itself through, plus some human activity over there probably also helped. Um, let's see what the atom fast is saying. I'm just using the atom fast for mapping and just for dose rate, I just have it in my pocket. Um, the radio code I use more to go test stuff directly. And of course I want to do some spectroscopy with it. Um, just take a look quick. This is back to 0 0.04, which is about the background. So we definitely had something before. And what's the atom fast doing? Let's see here. This is a graph. I would say this is the area we were before where I found the, the, the small coal. I don't know what this peak here was, so I was close to some other spot. Now it's going down again, but I have the feeling if I go down to the stream it should rise. Well, I found this piece here, this looks awfully a lot like coal. It's very dark, it's pretty light, it's brittle, it's easy to break. Just came across this down at the stream. And the radio code is giving me 0 0.06 so far. Actually, the atom fast is, is going higher, interestingly. On the atom fast, we have around 0 0.1011. Also, on the history graph, it's peaking quite a bit here. So, I guess this is my second sample here. Oh, 0 0.07. The radio code is a bit slower, apparently. Interesting. Also, I have this here new, the radio code. I have the atom fast for a while. You maybe seen some, some old videos where I use it. There will be a review of the radio code coming up. I want to do a proper review. I really like the radio code, mostly for the gamma spectroscopy feature, of course. Um, I still like the atom fast. It's just a pity you can't do the spectroscopy thing. So they're both really neat devices. Cool. Okay, I think we really found something here. Um, I found the second piece, looks a bit similar like the first one, this looks really much like coal, it's also pretty brittle, as you see. Um, I'm getting 0 0.09, 0 0.10, around that on the radio code. And also there is like these bandings here you can see it for example, there's a dark band in the rock. And up here too, I'm pretty sure this is that coal layer. And I just parked the atom fast here, and it's actually doing something. It's 0 0.14, 1, 2. It even set off the alarm. I put the alarm to 0 0.15, and it actually sounded a few times before. So this is really cool. I found it. <laughs> Gorgeous area. Okay, there's definitely something here. It's really scratching at the alarm threshold. This is still not very much. This is really little radioactivity. It's maybe three times background. So it's not an extremely hot source. But it is a source. There is something here. Oh, I'm really happy. Awesome. Let's try to break out some samples here. This looks promising. I think I'll take this guy. And also the one down here. We had the radio coat before. Hope this fits in my jar. Maybe it doesn't, huh? Yeah, barely. Uh, small ones, huh? Hey, I think this is really good. We have a sample. We have two samples, actually. Maybe I'll also take some water. Maybe there's some tritium. I, I doubt it, though, but I'll, I'll do a spectroscopy on the water, too. Amazing! I'm, I'm really only two meters from the last spot. Last spot was, like, down there. Still up here in this area, and here you can see the banding really well. Like, I have to watch out not to get a wet feet. Put the radio code on here. You can see the dark band going through the rocks here. Actually, there's two there's the top one and the lower one. I thought there was only one, but it's very obvious. And I think also up there, there's another, there's multiple bands. This is pretty interesting, geologically speaking. It's very soft material, very brittle, it's very wet. I guess that's also a factor. Maybe last small interesting fact before I leave the area. Um, apparently the, the uranium is really contained in the coal. All the other rocks, that's also a thing I read in the article. Oh, this will be granite or something, I don't know what these boulders are, honestly. Um, these are really normal, they don't contain any uranium. It's really in the carbon, in the coal layer for some reason. Interesting. 
So I'm back at the bike and I want to do a little bit of sightseeing before we go back home. Um, join me for a small trip. I want to go enjoy the view, maybe check out one interesting spot. So I just stopped here quick to show you the view. I think this hill here is the highest point of the area. There's like a cell phone antenna on top. This is the Knopf area we talked about before. Come on, focus. Yeah. So this is to the north. Then if we look around here. Beautiful. It's pretty overcast, but nice weather anyway. And this area here, that's the Emmental, where the famous Emmentaler cheese comes from, or at least the recipe. And back there in the background you see a mountain range that's further away. That's the proper Alps. That's to the south where like the real mountains start. This, this here is more like a hilly landscape. Don't know if it counts as a mountain range, but we are at altitude about 1000 meters above sea level right here. Yeah, beautiful area. Highly suggest. Last point of interest before I go home, the tunnel we just passed, uh, this one here, it's called the Hegeloch Tunnel, or just Hegeloch, and apparently this is one of Switzerland's first tunnels, like, ever. It's pretty small, <laughs> but it's uh, very apparently man-made. I think the local farmers built this just to have uh, easier access uh, to the area. There is a small sign here, it's in German, but... Uh, Try to translate quick. The tunnel was built in 1839-40 um, from the farmers of the area with all the um, burn powder, apparently. Just, yeah, pretty neat thing. Let's walk through quick. After this, I'll head home. We'll end the video back in the lab. Ta-da! These are the samples. This looks very much like coal. <laughs> I also collected some normal rocks just to compare. This is another sample. And the first sample I collected at the first spot is still in here because it's really muddy and really wet. I think I'll just not use that for now. I also got a bottle of water. I'll do a long spectroscopy on that. Hey, for now, um, I have an old Geiger counter here too, with uh, the Chinese M4011 uh, beta gamma tube. Uh, I'm a bit short on my Geiger counters, uh, one of them died, my favorite one which I have to fix at some point. But since I have the scintillators, um, I'd probably just work with the scintillators. So the Atom Fast is running. Here is just uh, the graph of today. There is really a very apparent peak here. This is the time where I was uh, down where the coal pit was. So it's very obviously that something was going on there. Just go back to the normal display. This is like our background here. It's around 0 0.04 microsieverts. Um, let's see what happens if I put this to our coal. I have to have the phone nearby because my Bluetooth is kind of not working well on the, this old phone. Do I have the right side? Yes, yeah. The, the, the detector is up here. Yeah, slowly rising. Let's put a little bit more on top. See if this helps. So it's rising slowly but steadily and we have about double the background on the Atom Fasts um, you see it here too on the graph, it's slowly rising again back here, which is a good sign. We can also try the Geiger quick. Um, now we're around, let's say, 20 CPM. If I put this on top, I don't want to let it fall. I'm piling detectors on top of each other. Okay, it's already like at 50. Also, the speaker is broken here. Ah, I need to fix my Geiger counter. Sorry for that. But 
I think there's something happening, but this year is uh, more interesting to me right now, the, the scintillator detector. So let's take a quick look at the radio code. Um, from now on I think I'll use the radio code mostly for the spectroscopy thingy. Um, I think this needs some time, this needs a few hours. Maybe even I'll, do, I'll measure overnight to get a proper spectrum. This year is still pretty much background, nothing special yet. But I'm hoping to see a pattern something like this. I'll show you this here quick. I'm still pretty new to gamma spectroscopy and I'll do some boomer screenshots here, sorry for being lazy. Um, this is an amazing website for if you're into gamma spectroscopy, um, gammaspectacular.com. There is apparently a pattern called NORM, which means naturally occurring radioactive minerals. And we should get a graph something like this. Maybe not as extreme, but my radium samples, for example, or also the natural uranium that I found, always gave me a pattern that's pretty similar like this here. So I'm hoping to see this. I'll also show you the article quick that got me into this topic. I found this on this website. I'll put all the links in the description anyway. You can just go check the links below. Um, yeah, it's it's all in German though, most of the stuff, but I mean you can Google Translate it if you're uh, interested. Title is uh, Trubschachens Kurzer Traum vom Urangeschäft. So Trubschachens short dream of uh, uranium business. <laughs> it's pretty interesting, there's a lot of interesting details here. Yeah, and a small shout out I want to give to is from this guy here, he's a fellow Swiss YouTuber. Apparently, um, I don't know him personally, but I like his stuff. He has some interesting videos. They're all in German or even in Swiss German though, so maybe a bit difficult to understand for most of you. Um, yeah, but he was at a similar spot. I'm not sure if we were exactly at the same spot, but he had a nice uh, video too that I found when I did further re research. So this also inspired me. Um, yeah, check out his channel, Strahlenmesstechnik. Well, um, I will let the radio code take a spectrum, it will take a few hours, maybe I'll even do it overnight. Uh, in the meantime I want to show you some screenshots quick. So this one here is from the Atomfast app and this is a close-up, it's like the heat map of what I did today. I hope it's kind of accurate, I had some trouble with the GPS um, for some reason, I think my old phone is kind of dying. Um, yeah, but this is a, a nice screenshot where you see the heat map and it's clearly a hot spot in the area where I went down. Uh, to the to the river, to the stream. Um, this here is a second screenshot from the wider area. I was there like a few days before. Um, I didn't find the spot back then. I found two other like spots were a little bit more hotter or warmer, but nothing compared to what I found today. So today was really the good spot. And um, I also want to show you one specific website that I like a lot, a lot for stuff like this. This is Switzerland specific, so it only will be helpful if you're in Switzerland. But if you're interested in geology, you're in radioactive elements or stuff like that, it's amazing. This is called SwissTopo.ch. I think it's SwissTopo. If you Google SwissTopo, you find it. This is like a, a map archive of all of Switzerland with a lot of extra data. You get um, um, also historical maps and like uh, air, aerial view maps if you want. Um, there is like a lot of catalogs you can put in. I, I have it set to German right now, but I think there's an English version too. What I'm looking at now is Energierohstoffe, which means like energy resources or natural resources. And this here actually, that's how I found this spot. There is a spot right here. That's where I was. That's probably where they had the pit during World War II, I guess. Um, yeah, that's where I found my stuff. Um, this is a little bit of a different view over here. You can even like click on the, the kinds of uh, resources that you want to. Here there's even like ores. You can also just only look for uranium ore if you want. Interestingly, this site doesn't really mention the uranium, it only mentions the coal. You can click on it, you get a lot of additional information. Um, yeah, this site is amazing. If you're in Switzerland and you're looking to find spots like this, highly suggest uh, Swiss Topo. Okay, it's the next day today. 
So yesterday evening I took about a three hour um, spectrum of the coal samples here. Here's a picture of the detector, the radio code in the middle of the pile. And here is the actual spectrum. And I think I see the norm pattern. It's pretty weak, but it's there. Especially around the 600 kilo electron volts, there is a small peak that is uh, related to bismuth 214. And that's a part of the radium decay chain, which is a part of the uranium decay chain and so forth. So this is pretty much a sign for me that we have something here. It is pretty weak. In, I want to compare it quick to a small sample of pitch blend that I found in actually my first video when I went to Graubünden to Trun to find some uranium ore there. Um, I'll show that in a minute. Also, um, I did a, a 10 hour or so spectrum of the water, which there is a tiny bit of also 600 kilo electron volt activity there. This is astonishing to me and I'm not really sure what it is. I don't think it's tritium. Tritium would be at 5 kilo electron volt. So very low down. I didn't, don't see any sign of tritium. Maybe it could be radium. Eh, sorry, radon, I mean, radon gas. I'm not really sure how to detect radon yet. This is I'm still very new to spectroscopy, to gamma spectroscopy, so I have a lot to learn there. But these are some pretty interesting results. Um, just before we end the video, I want to show you this up close quick, just to compare. So just to show you how weak this source is actually, I have the atom fast here, it's clicking away. I think you can hear it. So if I put the atom fast on the coal samples from yesterday, there is a very small increase in click rate, but it's hardly there. This here is the small sample of pitch blend that I was talking about. Very much obvious that this is way stronger. Like, yeah. Also natural uranium from the mountains. The whole pile of coal here is barely that active, so it's, it is very weak. Also here is uh, the radio code, still clicking away on the water bottle. Just to you know, see, I, I put it a little bit away from the other samples just to be sure not to pick up any uh, leak radiation. <laughs> well, I guess that's it. That's the conclusion. Um, very last thing I want to do quick, I'll just um, switch through um, the spectrograph of the coal samples that we have here, which is really, the, the signals are weaker. And to compare, I'll put the uranium ore from Graubünden, the spectrogram I took from that. There you can see the norm pattern much more uh, clearly. So I'll switch them once or twice or three or four times. But it's there. It's there. There's a clear signal. There is naturally occurring radioactive material in this coal, which I find really interesting. Um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And um, I'll see you for our next adventure pretty soon, I hope. Have a good time. Bye, folks.